All of the spines on our spine wall are perfectly straight, but what if they weren't? This is a real human spine on display at the Bone Museum that has idiopathic scoliosis. There is various different types of scoliosis, including congenital, degenerative, and idiopathic, and for this video we're going to talk about why this one is idiopathic. Congenital scoliosis can occur when an individual is born with a hemi or wedge-shaped vertebrae. This can occur due to a failure of formation of the vertebrae. The wedge shape of the vertebrae is what causes a curvature in the spine as it sets up all of the other vertebrae to be at an angle. In this spine, there are no hemi vertebrae present. We can also observe that all of the intervertebral disc spaces are preserved, which is something that we don't typically see in congenital cases. Due to the age of the specimen, we also looked into the possibility of degenerative scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis appears from a wear of the intervertebral discs, causing a spinal collapse, which is something that we don't see here. What we can see in this spine is a gradual curvature and a fusion of the T8 to T11 thoracic vertebrae, as well as a restructuring of the ribs around it in order to allow for for additional support on the curve. Wolf's Law is an anatomical principle which states that bone will remodel itself to compensate for mechanical stress, which is what we are seeing happen to the bone here. So as the curvature of the spine got worse and persisted, the vertebrae and the ribs overcompensated by laying down new bone and fusing together. Now a curvature this severe really impacted this individual's overall anatomy. If we look at the pelvis, we can see that it's slightly tilted to one side to help compensate the curve. They would have also most likely had great respiratory troubles as the rib cage compressed both the left and and right lung. Lastly, idiopathic scoliosis is the most common type of scoliosis, which is mostly diagnosed in adolescents and has no known cause. Because the defining factors for degenerative and congenital scoliosis are not present here, the best diagnosis for this spine is idiopathic scoliosis. So that's a little bit more about this spine with scoliosis. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like and follow for more.